received this package in the mail today. It's an AliExpress package. That's pretty sad. Well, this doesn't mean very much to me, but right off the bat, if we see it's a 1969, it says it's a John Lindsay Hood amplifier. This looks like the Hood amplifier layout. These are not the right transistors for either the hood original or for this board. I can tell that right now. So there's apparently two hood amplifiers here. Are they left and right? Yes, they are. They are mirror images of each other, which means they can be a left and right. The big difference is that this is apparently a Chinese copy of the hood, and this is a power supply. So we have a left and right channel, amplifier, amplifier, power supply, power supply. These capacitors are used. They're dirty. And this one has a little piece of circuit board stuck to it. Yeah, it's a little... So these, these have been removed from something. Anybody recognize that? So we have values? No. We have transistor numbers, resistor values, Resistor, resistor. It's a potentiometer. Is there another one? Two o four. Two o two. Here is the seller's page.
So I, I take it that the big round capacitor will replace these four capacitors. Like that. So we're looking at this board. Three terminal devices here, here, and here. It's probably the amplifier. This is probably the regulator. I'm not sure about that. So we have other filters. And this is labeled in and out, so we have that. I think they cost me eleven ninety. I think the fifteen seventeen is assembled but without capacitors. The eleven ninety is a kit. And eleven twenty one shipping. You have a choice of one or two or more. I ordered two just because I wanted to see if I got a left and a right. If you order only one, it's either this or this. Once a transformer, not DC, although we'll look at that, from 12 to 28 uh, volts AC, and it uses a, a 5200. Zero, zero. And then Toshiba's large tube, 2SC5200. It's suspicious that this is a 5200 and that's a 5200. So I'll go to the AutoCAD system and attempt to make a layout bill of material, whatever. These John Leslie Hood amplifiers are a real rat hole for me. I've already done four of them. This will be JLH number five. And the other reason I'm doing it is because of the integral power supply. I have sorted and identified all the components that came with this JLH69 amplifier kit. I've prepared a drawing with a schematic and a board layout where I identify all the components. Also have a prepared a bill of materials and it contains the component identifiers, the value of the component, and the markings on the component. This is the original schematic published in 1969 by a fellow named John Lindsay Hyphen Hood, JLH. I've done four of these amplifiers tested them and uh, re reviewed them on previous videos. I'm going to call this one amplifier number five. And the drawings, component data sheets, bill of materials are all in the uh, directory below. Now the difference between this amplifier and the original hood amplifier are many. The biggest one is that this amplifier contains an onboard power supply. So the amplifier part of it is identified here. And this pretty well follows the JLH layout. Component values are different. Of course, the transistors are different. The 1969 transistors are no longer available. power supply is here. Not included in the kit is the is a transformer to supply the full wave rectifier. The power supply is not adjustable 
it has no voltage reference. Now one of the characteristics of the original amplifier was the fact that by adjusting one of these resistors, uh, Lindsay Hood recommended this one, you can make the voltage here at VE one half of the total voltage. Because the thing is entirely DC coupled from here to here. So adjusting the bias on this transistor adjusts the bias on these two things. The goal is to make this point one half of the voltage being supplied. Lindsay Hood refers to that as the X point, so I've taken to uh, identifying that. Now, the voltage supplied here is not a, a, a DC voltage obtained elsewhere. The raw DC voltage I call VCC, and it only appears here. This voltage, Vreg, is the voltage we're going to have to split in half to get to this point. So I give you places on the board, probably this resistor, or this resistor, where you can measure this voltage without getting your probe dangerously close to something else. You can also measure it right here, but you got to be careful you don't cross these leads. And then that voltage is set to 50% of this voltage by varying this uh, VR1. Then the current passing through here, which is nominally 1 amp, is set by this potentiometer here. Well, reset configuration VR2. Now this is a Class A amplifier, which is a heat generator. These two transistors are here and here, and they require a heat sink. But since we have this transistor, it's a big fella too. In fact, all three of these are the same. We're going to have to have a heat sink on all three of these. Either three individual heat sinks or one big heat sink. The designer made uh, provisions for alternate capacitor sizes here and here. These two capacitors are the input capacitor here and here the output capacitor. The designer also allowed for the replacement of these four electrolytics with one big one. The kit included one big one. And so on the drawing I make a note of that. I, I don't call these out. And in the uh, bill of materials, I note that. If you're interested in the theory behind this or how they work, I suggest you look at my six preceding videos on the JLH 1969 amplifier. So I will assemble this, provide a heat sink and transformer, and then we'll do some tests. That'll be part two of this video.